Hello, I'm David. I'm with Santan Solar, your one-stop shop for all your solar needs. And today we're going to be talking about part four of our do-it-yourself off-grid systems that people would like to build. Uh, today we're talking about charge controllers, how to size them and just how uh, charge controllers work. So as we know that the charge controllers are an essential part of the uh, system that you're building. And basically what it does is it takes the energy that you have from your panels, once we decided how big our panels are, how big the battery we're going to need, the charge controller will then dictate that DC power from your panels and how much it's going to be transferring it to your batteries to keep them full so that you can be running them autonomously should you need so. These panels will also send power to your loads as you're using them during the daytime. So it does kind of double duty. There are a couple types of uh, charge controllers that are out there in the market you've probably heard of. One of them would be the PWM and the other one is the MPPT. Now here at Santan Solar, we sell just the MPPTs, and that's gonna be the, uh, the main topic of our discussion today. Uh, what that does is that allows your uh, system to find the sweet spot of how much power that your panels can output to your charge controller, to your battery. And that is where key is, because it'll take those high voltages and turn it to lower voltages, and it looks for that particular maximum power point that it can use to help charge your uh, batteries. You've got to make sure you're checking that you get the right size charge controller. And a lot of them out there are going to say, well, how do you do that? Well, uh, the amps are the value that you'll have to pay most close attention to uh, for the charge controller. So there's a very basic formula that you can use that'll help you decide uh, the size that you need. Uh, using the formula of a power equals volts times amps, you get 3,000 watts and your battery, your battery bank is like 48 volts, okay? You will then use the uh, 3,000 watts. Let's say we have 3,000 watt need and you have a 48 volt battery bank. So what you'll do is you'll take the 3,000 watts, divide it by the 48 volts. That'll give you about 62 and a half amps. So that's the kind of size you have to make sure your charge controller can handle at least uh, 62.5 amps. Now, figuring other environmental factors. What that means is that uh, depending where you're at, panels can be, as we discussed earlier in previous videos, panels in different environmental conditions such as colder weather will produce more more voltage as opposed to in hotter weather where they might produce less. So we always want to look for the, the most maximum that it's going to put out in colder climates. And that means we want to give it like a 20, 20 to 25 percent buffer. So we usually go over the 25 percent. So you want to increase that by 25 percent. So your 62 and a half amps at 25 percent, you're going to be looking at approximately around a little over 78 amps. That's what you want to make sure your, your charge control can handle. And that's the example we get for 3000 watts, 48 volts. With a 25% increase due to environmental factors that you want to put in, 78, a little over 78, about 78.1 amp is what you're going to be looking for. So you want to make sure that your uh, charge controller can handle that. So every charge controller that's out there, whether it be an EP Ever or, or, a, or a Victron, a Fang Fuson, whatever kind of controller that you're using, it's going to have a maximum system voltage limits. So you, what you want to do is you, once you calculate how much voltage your panels are going to be putting in, adding that 25% that increase so you can have that little variance, the maximum you want to put should not be exceeded. Every charge controller is going to have a uh, maximum limit of voltage and amps, but you want to make sure you stick within that voltage range because if you do more than that, you could burn out your, your charge controller or you might have errors. So uh, you want to stay at or just below it, okay? So that way you get the best performance out of your charge controller. And then, of course, the amps that's coming out of that, if you have a 40 amp charge controller, that's what's going to be putting out to your battery. And generally, you want to put some sort of a circuit breaker or fuse to go from your charge controller to your battery so that uh, if there's any overcharge or over voltage, you're protecting your battery as well as your charge controller. And generally, if you have a 40 amp um, charge controller, you could use something of the nature of a 50 amp just to accommodate for any surges. If you do something that's very close to that, Rule of thumb is, is that if you use a 40 amp charge controller and use a 40 amp circuit breaker to your battery, and there's any variance that happens, you pull more, you pull a bigger load, or your charge controller, uh, your panels are putting out more power than they need, then you could trip your circuit breaker. It won't hurt it, you'll probably overvolt or overload your uh, circuit breaker trip. So to compensate for that, you can go a little bit bigger uh, circuit breaker on your uh, charge controller to battery. So you can use like a 50 amp. If you have a 40 amp, you can go use a 50 amp. That'll give you that little cushion of variance that'll happen should the charge uh, from your panels is greater during environmental controls. At that time, it'll put out a little bit more amperage than you want to your batteries. Your uh, circuit breaker can accommodate you without harming anything. 
what you got to keep in mind is that you do not go over these values. Again, I'll just rewarn you that if you, if you go over them, you can cause some damage or you'll just ha constantly be um, having alerts and alarms and it'll keep shutting off on you. Uh, the worst case scenario is that you can actually burn out or damage your, your charge controller. In conclusion, you know, the MPPT is the best option that you can have for the best performance from your solar panels that will help you charge your batteries. Using MPPT is pretty much commonplace nowadays. There are only a few places that use PWMs and um, that's a little bit more restrictive. And that's good for like very small units or things that don't require a lot of variance in their power. MPPT means you can use much larger arrays that it can manage, uh, you can use more power and it lowers it down enough to go to your batteries. At Santan Solar, we do carry a variety of those. We do carry some EP Evers. We do carry Victrons uh, of varying voltages and amperage and uh, varying prices, so you can do that. Uh, we do carry occasional odd ones like uh, Palmer and uh, uh, Fang Kusan is another one we do carry in stock while we still have them, while stocks are limited. And uh, if you want to, just go ahead and check us out. Uh, you can get us online at www.santansolar.com or you can just give us a call at 480 584-4281, that's our Gilbert office. Or if you were uh, in, the, in the east and you want to talk to the Savannah, Georgia uh, place, you can go ahead and give them a call at 912-228-4843, and that's in the Savannah, Georgia warehouse. You can speak to any of the salespeople there, and uh, they do have tech support as well. So if you have any questions or concerns, and you want to make sure you got the right size uh, charge controller for your system, just give us a call, and we'll be glad to help. Thanks again. Have a great day.